Kimberly Edwards from cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight I am going to teach you guys how to make a traditional German fruit stew, okay? And our fruit stews in German are called mouse and don't be scared, it's not actually with mouse in it. It's actually spelled M-O-O-S and it's pronounced mouse. So all my friends used to look at me crazy when I was little and I'd be like, would you like some mouse when they're at my house and they just would like not get it. But hey, you gotta be proud of your culture, right? So tonight I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I just harvested our very first harvest this season. Um, it's the middle of June and I've just harvested my first harvest of rhubarb here in Canada. And it was an enormous harvest. My entire counter all the way to my, my um, camera is full of rhubarb and I've been chopping for like an hour, okay, storing and stuff. So tonight I'm actually going to make a dessert. It's a dessert stew and it's chock full of delicious rhubarb goodness. Now you can make these mouse stews out of all kinds of fruits, okay, and even mixtures of fruits. But tonight we're just going to do rhubarb and actually rhubarb is my very favorite one. My grandmother used to make it, my mom used to make it, and this is how we do it. So I'm actually, I've got a um, measuring cup here, it's six six cups and what I need to do is I need to chop up six cups of sliced rhubarb okay so that's actually what I'm working on right now on my um, stove top and I don't have it on right now but I have a large pot ready this is a soup pot right large just a large stock pot and that's where it's gonna go so when I'm finished slicing all this rhubarb guess what mom I'm making rhubarb mouse. Oh, yeah, I love that. Tell us about mouse. Tell us about that. You tell us about mouse on the farm. Well. I just explained it's not actually an animal. No. Okay. It's, it's a lovely um, cross between a sauce and a pudding. <laughs> so it's cross, in mom's opinion, it's a cross between a sauce and a pudding. I called it a fruit stew. Well, that's, that's even better. Okay. So. We're chopping up six cups, right? Yes. It doesn't take a lot of ingredients. It's gonna take like six cups of water, mm -hmm. it's like six cups of rhubarb, right? One cup of sugar, right? A little bit of butter, mm -hmm. and that's a wrap, pretty much. Cornstarch, do we add that at the end? I guess we do. I hope we have. Yes, we do. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. I'm chopping this up. We'll be right back when I have a full six cups. <laughs> hey. By the way, this is my mom, Inger Turner. Make sure you check out her website. Hi, I've been working in the garden <laughs> all day. <laughs> check her out at ingerturnertoday.com. Okay, here we go. Now, my whole measuring cup, this is about six and a half cups. It's up to the top, okay? Now, rhubarb has this gorgeous green and red color, pinky red color, but guess what? It's going to turn color. It's not going to be green. It's not going to be a pretty color of pink. This is going to be brown, and that's just the way it is, so get over it. Okay? Don't let it hurt your feelings. That's the way it is. So, into the pot goes my six and a half cups of rhubarb. I have it on a medium heat right now, medium high heat actually. I am now going to put in, I'm going to put in six cups of liquid. Now I could put water in if I wanted to. You could put fruit juice in if you wanted to, but I think it would really confuse the flavor. Um, I'm actually putting tea in today and that's just because we always seem to have cold tea left over and we cook with it. Tea has more flavor than water does and uh, that's going in tonight. I really like this kind of tea. It's actually just an orange pico tea. It's from PG Tips. Make sure you check out that review on my channel and you can find out what I think about it. Okay, so I'm going to need just a little bit more water to beat that up and finish that up. Hold on one second. Okay. We're going to fill this back up to the top. This is six cups into my pot. Now, it's unnecessary for me right now to add any sugar. We're going to cook this for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so long, probably 30, 40 minutes before it's done. So 30, 40 minutes, right? The first 20 minutes or 25 minutes of that 40 minutes or so is going to be done with no sugar. It's just the liquid and the rhubarb. They're just hanging out and they need to get softened. So we're just going to bring this up to a nice simmer and we're going to let that go for 20 minutes. Okay, so waiting for this to come up to the simmer. I'm going to put my timer on for 20 minutes. Okay, and you're going to see me when that happens. Okay, so my pot has come to a boil. I've just brought it down. I'm bringing it down to a simmer. I want it to simmer for 20 minutes, okay? I brought it down to just about medium low heat, okay? 20 minutes, put it on your timer, we'll be right back. Hi, everybody. All right, so 
I was going to finish off my rhubarb mouse last night, except I realized I didn't have any cornstarch, so I had to go get some. So it's okay. I put what I had in the fridge. It was just the rhubarb and the liquid, as you know, you've been watching this video that's been edited. So that's why I look different, okay? All right, I'm going to get this prepared. This is coming right back up to a boil, all right, uh, to the simmer. And I'm going to mix two tablespoons of cornstarch. Make sure you measure it out. Two tablespoons of cornstarch with cold water. If you mix it with hot water, it's just going to go into big clumps and grody. It's not going to do what you want. It's going to be clumpy. You need to use cold water so that you can make sure that it's um, all those lumps are gone. So that when you add it to the mouse, you don't have these lumpy things. That's not what you want. So go ahead and put, I don't know, maybe three quarters of a cup of cold water in here. Or in any container. <laughs> Okay, this is the easiest way for me to do it in containers like this because you can just shake it up and make sure that all those little um, chunks are gone, right? Perfect. All right. I'm also going to add one cup of sugar. Now keep your sugar out because you might need to retaste test. It might not be sweet enough. It is pretty sour and tangy. Beautiful. Now stir that through until that sugar dissolves. Once that sugar dissolves and this is up at a nice simmer, you're going to add that cornstarch. Now the corn is almost done when you're when you put the cornstarch in, you're nearly done. Okay? You don't want to do do the cornstarch thing until you know you're at the very end. Okay, make sure that the rhubarb is nice and tender. Okay, I had a chicken in the oven. <laughs> I had to check on it. So once you're nearly done, you know that your rhubarb is nice and tender and your sugar's in there, you know, it's all dissolved. What you're going to do is, this is gonna go in. You're gonna pour it all in and you're gonna stir it through. When this comes back up to that simmer, you don't wanna like boil it over again. You want it to bring it to a simmer again. Once it comes to a, that, that nice simmering boil, that's when you're gonna achieve this cornstarch's maximum thickening power. So if you're satisfied with the texture of the stew, which should just be a little bit, you know, I don't want it to just be like water. I want it to have a little bit of texture, right? A little bit more syrupy than that. And that's what this is going to provide. This is just going to thicken up a little bit. That's really what cornstarch does, it's a thickener. Now, when you do that, you're gonna let that come to a boil, let it go for, I don't know, maybe two minutes, just to make sure that you achieve that maximum thickening power and you cook that all out, because it you know, doesn't taste nice, just like that. So hey, that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for this to simmer even more. And here we are, <laughs> perfect. So this is going in, nearly done here now. Now, if that, that um, mouse does not look like it's thick enough, just do the same thing with another tablespoon of cornstarch and some cold water. Throw it back in there if you want it to be a little bit more thick. Now, it's going to make it look even a little bit creamy as well, so don't be alarmed. It's going to be okay. All right. I'm also going to retaste this because I want to make sure that it's the right sweetness. Mm. That is going to use the rest of that um, one cup of sugar. I actually put two thirds of a cup in, hoping I could um, cut down a little bit on sugar. It needs a little bit more just so that it's more palatable. It can be very sour. So I'm going to put about another half of a third, <laughs> one sixth of a cup. We're going to stir that through. That should probably do it for me. Anyone else, if, even if you, um, you can also just let everybody um, put sugar in their own bowls once they eat it. Now you can eat this hot or cold. My mom especially likes drizzling a little bit of cream in there of some kind, whipping cream, table cream, like whatever kind of cream you have. Drizzling that inside is so good. Now you can also do apple ones. Apple is my second favorite. They could have cherry ones. You can have these the for holiday ones. Make sure you check out that recipe on my site as well. Um, and those are all delicious alternatives. You can do them with um, dried fruit and you can do them with fresh fruit, even frozen fruit. Okay, I'm bringing this up. It's, on, it's boiling now. I'm going to set my timer for three minutes. 
Okay, so it wasn't thickened as much as I want it to be. So I'm actually only going to put about a half a tablespoon more, and that should probably do it. Cold water, and that's what you do, okay? I've also tested it from, for the sweetness, and it's perfect right now. When you're mixing the cornstarch and adding it, don't add too much liquid because you don't want that to be waterlogged. You got me? You're trying to thicken it. You're not trying to thin it out. So just add just enough water so that you can mix that well with the cornstarch. And in it goes. I'm setting the timer again for another three minutes to make sure that I achieve that maximum thickening power as soon as it reaches that simmer. And we'll be right back. Okay, we're ready. Here we go. This is all done. It has a nice thickness to it. It's beautifully sweet. Now you can, again, like I said, you can wait and eat this when it's cold or after you store it in the fridge overnight. You can eat it. I like it like that too. It's a totally different experience, but it's beautiful when it's hot. Now this is like blazing inferno hot, okay? Before I spoon, before I dish this out, we finish it with butter, with a little pat of butter, just to make it a little bit more silky and more flavorful. Fat carries flavor, guys, and this has no fat in it, right? So, here we go. We're just going to put a little bit on the top. It just makes it a little bit more rich and more um, delicious, for sure. Okay, now into my bowl, I'm going to spoon a little bit. Use a ladle, like a soup ladle. It's a stew, it's a fruit stew, okay? Now this is super hot, super hot. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It's not much to look at. It's brownie and like it has, looks like it has all those rhubarb pieces all broken up in. But this is delicious. Hold on. Super hot, careful. Man, now that's good. Mmm. This is good on top of ice cream. If it's, if you can um, reduce it a little bit, make it thicker. It's beautiful on ice cream. It's great with that cream in it. Um, I'll show you. A tiny bit of cream. Do that walk. And you've got yourself a fantastic summertime, springtime, whatever fruits do for dessert. Mmm. You'll be glad you did that. Now that's almost like having a rhubarb pie without having to eat all that pastry. You're actually cutting down on a lot of calories. The worst thing in there, I mean, there's some sugar in here, but that's for the whole pot. I put one cup and just a pat of butter. I mean, you're doing pretty well. Anyhow, that's how you make rhubarb mouse. I hope you guys actually venture and try it. I hope you experiment with other fruits as well. It's delicious, everything, any kind of mouse I've had that my, my family has made, I've loved, okay? So go ahead and try it. It's just a new way to use your fruit up, especially if you have a super great harvest or you find a really good sale at the grocer. All right, everybody, I hope you follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. I hope you like the fan pages, facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on youtube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly and ifood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly. And my site is cookingwithkimberly.com. Make sure you come on out, interact with me, let me know what's going down. Also, check out some more of my German recipes, my Eastern European recipes on there. I'm sure that you're going to like them too. All right, everybody, be champions in your kitchen. Shout out to BAM Niagara Boxing Club. They're responsible for my fitness. All right, everybody, eat deliciously out there.